The focus of this lesson is on using Gaussian elimination to solve a three variable system. So the ultimate goal is to write the system in what we would call triangular form and then to use back substitution to solve. So to begin with the process we need to get a leading one coefficient on an x term in one of the equations. So if we look at our second equation there we can see that that has a leading coefficient of one because it says x so that's one x. So that would be the first equation in our triangular form. In fact I'm going to go ahead and just write that equation over here because I want to keep track of my triangular form that I'm going to have to use for back substitution later. But what I'm going to do with that equation is I'm going to take it and I'm going to pair it with the other two equations in my system. So I'm actually going to end up writing it twice. So I'm going to have two pairings and then um, it's the goal ultimately is to eliminate the x term in these pairings. So I have the equation 4x plus 2y plus 3z equals 6 that I need to pair and then I also have uh, 2x minus y plus z equals negative 1 that needs to pair. And again we're going to go ahead and work on eliminating x from both pairs. So in this first pair I need to pick a multiplier that allows these to be opposite. So if this is a positive 4, the opposite of that would be negative 4. So I would need a multiplier of a negative 4 because negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And then that multiplier would multiply on every term including the other side of the equation. So just make sure that's what happens. So you need to distribute that all the way across, which most students would show, um, but the, for the sake of room and cleanliness of this video, I won't. Um, but I will verbally talk through it. So negative 4 times 1x is negative 4x. Added to 4x will add out to 0. That's why we did that. Negative 4 times 2y is negative 8y. Added to this 2y is going to give us negative 6y. Negative 4 times a positive 2 is negative 8z. Added to 3z is negative 5z. And then negative 4 times a positive 1 is negative 4. Added to 6 is a positive 2. So notice the x term is gone, which was our goal. In our second pairing, our multiplier needs to be negative 2 because that will give us opposite coefficient of this equa second equation here. So we need to distribute that negative 2 across on every term. So negative 2 times x is negative 2x added to 2x adds out to 0, which so we don't need to write that. Negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y added to negative 1y is negative 5y. And then negative 2 times a positive 2z is negative 4z added to 1z is negative 3z. And then negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 added to negative 1 is negative 3. So notice in both pairings I've eliminated x. So we've just completed step two of our process. So now we're going to move on to step three, which is basically getting a leading y coefficient on one of our y terms. So it doesn't matter which of these two equations you use, these resulting equations that you got, um, but you can use either one, but you want to get a leading coefficient of one. So to get that leading coefficient of one, we just need to divide off the leading coefficient on y. So the leading coefficient is negative six, so just divide that off from every term. And when you do that, that'll get you your leading coefficient of 1y. And so this ends up being 1y plus 5,6z equals a negative one-third. So you have your leading 1y equation. So that equation is part of your triangular form. So I'm going to go ahead and add it to my triangular form system that I am building. And then now what we'll do is we'll take that equation that we just got and pair it with the other to eliminate the y's. So I went ahead and rewrote my equation so that they're paired together. And the goal is to eliminate y now. And we can see 
that our first equation has 1y and our second equation has a negative 5y. So we have to pick multipliers that allow these to have opposite coefficients. So I actually only need to pick a multiplier for that first equation. If I pick a multiplier of 5, that'll give us a 5y, and this is already negative 5y. So that will allow them to be opposites so that when I combine them together, they will eliminate. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 5 onto y, and that's 5y added to negative 5y adds out to 0y, which is 0, which is why we did that. I'm going to go ahead and distribute it on the next term, 25/6z added to negative 3z. And then if you need to, you'll have to give these common denominators so that you can combine them together. But this is 25/6z and negative 18/6z. So that's 7/6z. And then 5 multiplied onto negative 1 third is negative 5 thirds added to negative 3, which is negative 9 thirds. So negative 5 thirds and a negative 9 thirds is a negative 14 thirds. So you do get some fractions, and you can use your calculator to help you simplify, um, but you can also review your fractional steps if you need to as far as the arithmetic goes. And then um, that eliminates our y term, as you can see, and then that leaves us a resulting equation um, with z. And so now the goal is to get a leading one on our z term, so we're on our step five, so we need to get a leading one. So normally I would think of this as I need to divide off that coefficient, which is fractional. So if I divide off 7 sixths, that's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to do that instead. So what I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other but then that'll get my leading 1z, so this is 1z equals, and then I can go ahead and simplify this side, 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 6 twice, 7 goes into 7 once, 7 goes into a negative 14, a negative 2 times, multiply straight across, I get negative 4 over 1, which is just negative 4, so I get my leading coefficient of 1 on my z, and I get 1z equals a negative 4, and that's the third piece of our triangular form, which you can see. You got your leading 1 on your x, your leading 1 on your y, and your leading 1 on your z. So then now what we do is we use our triangular form and back substitute to solve for our z, our y, and our x. So to back substitute, we start with our bottom equation in our triangular form, and it says z is negative 4. And what we'll do is we'll use that and plug the fact that z equals negative 4 back into the prior equation. So I would rewrite my prior equation, but instead of writing a z, I would put parentheses and I'd put what z equals. So z, we're saying equals, well, I'll, I'll kind of put a different color here, we're saying z equals negative 4. So I would plug that in for my z here, same as this z. And then we would simplify and um, solve that for y. So because that's the only variable that's left in this equation, so we were left with y minus 26, which reduces to 10 thirds, equals a negative 1 third. And then we'd add 10 thirds to both sides, and we get 9 thirds on the right, which is just 3. So y is 3. So then what we do is we now know that y is 3. So we got our z and we have our y. So then we will take both the z and the y and plug them back into the very first equation. So we will rewrite our first equation, x plus 2y, but don't put y, we're going to put what we substitute in for y, plus 2z, but don't write z, equals 1. And then in place of y, 
where there was a y we would put 3 and in place of z we would put negative 4. But then this allows us to simplify and solve for x. So we get x plus 6 minus 8 equals 1 and this is x minus 2 equals 1. So add 2 to both sides you'd see x equals 3. And so the solution set at the end of the day is the order triple 3, 3, negative 4. And if you wanted to be sh sure that that is correct, you would have to plug it into all three equations and make sure they come out to be true. And in this case, it will work out that that is true. So that is our solution set, that order triple 3, 3, negative 4.